Hello and welcome. Please pause this video and try the problem on your own. Okay, let's read this problem together to get a sense of what it's asking. New Clarendon Park is undergoing renovations to its gardens. One garden that was originally a square, so here I'm going to underline this because we're already being told that um, we're dealing with the shape of the square. So we're going to keep that in mind as we go forward. We have some kind of square garden. And it's being adjusted, okay, so they're going to change the size of it, so that one side is double in length, while the other side is decreased by three meters. So doubling, and then we're decreasing one of the sides by three meters. So let's just, let's just sketch that out to make sense of the problem so far. So originally we have a square, so this will be my square. And I like to think of the sides of the square as S for side, because all the sides are the same. You can call them whatever you want, X or whatever. I'm going to use S for side. And then they change this, and how do they change it? Let's see again. They double one dimension, the length, and they decrease the other by three. So I'm going to sketch that out the way, you know, I, I want to envision that, right? Because they're doubling one side in length, so I'm going to double the width, and then decrease the other dimension by about three. Now that's all relative, right? We don't really know if this shorter side is really three times shorter right, than, than this side over here. So I don't really know what this length is in comparison to this, if it's actually to scale at all. I just know that it is shorter. So I draw it shorter. So this is S, right? And we took three away. So that means it's whatever S was before, it's now three less than it was originally. So we take three away. And here we doubled this dimension. So if it was S before, it's now twice as large, so it's 2S. So this is our new garden uh, right here. Let's see what they want us to do. The new rectangular garden will have an area that is 25% more than the original square garden. So the original area is just what? Well, to find the area of the square, you multiply S by S, or S squared. Now we have a larger area that's 25% um, larger than the original. So whatever it was originally, it would be S squared plus 25% of S squared. So we do 25% or 0.25 times S squared, and that's what our new area is. And if you think about that, it's like having one group of S squared plus 0.25 groups of S squared. So if we add one group and 0.25 groups, that's 1.25 S squared. So that's our new area. And here, um, we want us to write an equation that could be used to determine the length of the side of the original square garden. So they want us to write an equation that can help us solve for s. So here we could write um, s times s equals s squared, but it doesn't allow us to solve for anything. However, in this other garden right here, right in this garden, right, we know that 2s, one dimension, right, times the other, times s minus 3, would have to equal the area, which we just said was 1.25 s squared. So this equation right here, right, we could use it to solve for the value of s. And to, they ask us to explain how this equation models the situation. We could then say in words that 2s represents the side that's been doubled in length, s minus 3 represents the side that's been decreased by 3, and 1.25 times s squared represents the enlarged area of the garden. And s represents the side length of the original square garden. We could say all those things to describe this. So you would want to write that down. Now they want us to determine the area in square meters of the new rectangular garden. Um, so here, um, we want to find the length of s, right? In order to find the area of this garden, I'm going to find what s actually is and then apply that to find the area. So let's do that. So how would we solve an equation like this? Well, my first instinct tells me to distribute. So I'm going to distribute this 2s by s, that's 2s times s, that's 2s squared. Then we're subtracting, so it's subtracting 2s times 3, or 6s, right? 2 times 3 is 6. It's like three groups of 2s or 6s. And that equals 1.25s squared. Now, to, I notice we have s squared, so that means this is a quadratic. In other words, um, you see it on both sides of the equation, s is being squared. Because our variable is being raised to the second power, we know we're dealing with a quadratic, 
equation. So I want to get um, zero on one side. That's usually my go-to strategy for dealing with this. So to do that, I could take away 2s squared and add 6s, but that feels like too much work to me. So I'm going to subtract 1.25s squared and get zero on this side, and I'll do that twice. Do that on both sides of our equation, the left side and the right. And anything subtracted from itself is zero, so we have zero on the right side. 2s squared, so two groups of s squared, minus 1.25 groups of s squared is 0 0.75 groups of s squared. So you can just think of 2 minus 1.25. Then you have minus 6s, and that equals zero. So in this case right here, we don't have a c term, a constant. There's no plus a number here, like plus 2 or plus 3. So in that case, I'm going to try to factor out uh, from both terms here. I notice that both terms have an s in it, so I'll factor that out. That's the largest thing they seem to have in common. So if I factor s out, right, I have to ask myself, s times what would give me 0.75s squared? And I ask that question because we don't want to change the value of anything here. Um, we want to keep everything the same, just write it in a different form. So s times 0.75s, if we multiply those two terms, two values, we would get 0.75s squared. Then we're subtracting, so s times what would give us 6s? Well, s times 6 would give you 6s. So now we're one step away, really, from solving this equation because we have this right value, s, times this binomial here, this value. So this monomial, we can think of it as a monomial times a binomial, um, even though it's really just one big binomial. But we can think of it as two numbers multiplied to get a product of 0. Now when that happens, we have our zero product property. So two things multiplied to get zero, you know that either the first value is zero, so s could equal zero, or the second value could equal zero, right? Because if either one of those were zero, the whole product would be zero. So we could say this 0.75s minus 6 is zero, or s is zero, or both. So s is zero, that's one possible solution, but I'm going to reject that because we don't want to have a garden that's zero by zero, right? That wouldn't make much sense here. Um, so here, if we solve for s, how do we do that? We add six to both sides. And what happens then? We get 0.75s equals six. And then to solve for s, we can divide both sides by 0.75, or three-fourths. Six divided by three-fourths is the same as six times four over three. And here we can reduce 6 over 3 is 2, right, times 4, and the answer will be 8. So the side length that we're looking for is 8. That's our, what we're finding here. But they want to know, what do they want to know? Let's see, what is the area of the new rectangular garden? So we're saying S equals 8. So what would that mean? 2S, that would equal 2 times 8, right, or 16. And then S minus 3 what would that equal? That's the other dimension. That would be 8 minus 3, or 5. So here, the area of the new garden is 16 times 5, which is 80. Now, here, this is our answer. 80 is the area of the new garden. Um, it's always a good idea to check to see if these things work out. In other words here, if we plug in s equals 8 into our side length here, when we calculate the areas of both gardens, we should find that the larger garden is 25% more, has an area of 25% more than the original garden. So that's a good thing to test. So let's do that really quick. So the original garden would be um, s times s, or s squared. We said a, so we'll call it area 1. Let's call it area 1, and this will be area 2. So there's little subscripts there to denote that. So area 1 is going to be 8 squared, or 64. And then we know, we just found area 2 equals 80. So is 80, right? 25% more than 64. Well, we could do 64 times 1.25 to confirm that. Or some people like to find a fourth of 64 by dividing by 4 and then adding that to 64, which is the same thing. All right, so do 64 times a fourth of divided by 4 plus 64. And in either case, if you do these calculations, you will find that you do get 80, which confirms right that the larger garden has an area of 25% more. So that gives us a sense that our answer is correct. So again, this would be the area. And since we're looking at meters, our final answer would be 80 meters squared.